In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, one God. Amen. Welcome to another in our series of Discovering Orthodoxy. Today I want us to think about what is faith. That might seem an easy question to answer, and it seems that lots of the people around us in the world have a good answer. When we talk about the Christian faith with friends at school or at work, or members of our family or people at university, often they have an idea of faith that isn't quite the same as ours. To many of the people that we meet on the streets and in our lives, faith is thought of as something completely unreasonable and irrational. It usually has no relation to what we experience ourselves in the orthodox life. And I want to challenge that today and to allow us to think about what faith really is. Many people will suggest that faith is something like believing in fairy stories. And they will say that our belief in God is not very much different from people's belief in Father Christmas. But nothing could be further from the truth. A bishop of the Church of England, the Anglican Church, recently spoke in one of the newspapers about the evidence there was to make it reasonable to believe in God. And immediately he found that he had lots of people attacking him in the newspapers and on the internet, saying that it was unreasonable to suggest that there could ever be evidence for the existence of God, because faith must be something that is completely without foundation. But we know in our experience as Orthodox Christians that that is far from the truth. They may say that faith requires no evidence, but we know that our faith is in fact reasonable and based on evidences that make sense to us. I do not recognise what they say faith is as that which motivates and sustains my own life and spirituality. Faith is sometimes described as having a blind hope, but that isn't Christian faith either. It's a bit like someone buying a lottery ticket and really hoping that they will win because they need the money for some family need or to go on holiday or to buy a car. But buying a lottery ticket isn't like faith at all. Buying a lottery ticket is a matter of statistics. In the UK, in the UK lottery, there are 14 million chances of winning. And if you bought 7 million tickets, you would have a 50% chance of winning. That is not faith, it is statistics. But that is often how our Christian faith is presented, that it was a matter of hoping that we would win some giant eternal cosmic lottery. Sometimes it's suggested that we even have such an incredible faith that we believe everything will turn out right even though we haven't entered the lottery at all. Again, this is nothing like the Christian faith we experience. This is why many anti-Christians attack us. They believe that our faith has no basis in reasonableness. And yet I want to show briefly in this programme that our faith is something which is not based on fairy tales but is something which has real meaning and a value and experience that we can trust. In the Old Testament, the word used for faith is the Hebrew word amun. And that word means faithfulness, or being trustworthy, or dependable. And being trustworthy means that we have some prior experience that makes it reasonable to trust in someone or something. When I was very much younger and at school, I went on a trip to one of the seaside places in Britain and part of our activity was to abseil down the cliffs at the seashore. These are some of the highest cliffs in the United Kingdom and to abseil means to attach yourself to a rope and lower yourself down. I had never tried it before but I successfully stepped over the edge and lowered myself several hundred feet on a thin rope. Why was I able to do this? It was not because I had a blind hope that everything would turn out okay. It was because I could see that the rope looked well maintained and in good order. It seemed to be firmly attached to a secure post at the top. I could see that those who were leading the activity were men who seemed to know what they were doing. And I trusted in my teachers that they would not allow us to do anything which was dangerous. But I really exercised trust when I took hold of that rope and stood at the edge of the cliff. It was then holding it in my hands that I had to make a decision for myself whether I trusted in the rope to secure me. And I did. And I went over the edge and slowly lowered myself down the cliff. 
Of course, that sort of faith can never be 100% certain. There could have been some fault in the rope I was unaware of. But as far as I could see, I had plenty of good reasons for taking hold of the rope and lowering myself over the edge. And that is what our faith in God is like to a great extent. We do not have 100% certainty because we are human and our knowledge of God is limited by our experience. But we have many good reasons for believing that God is trustworthy and can be depended on. We are like a small child who holds out its hands to be lifted up by its parents. The child's hands are small, but it knows that the parent's arms are strong. And it knows that even though its own arms might be too weak to support it, the parent will not let it go. If you have young children, you will know that often they will throw themselves from the top of a flight of stairs because they have learnt to trust their parents and know that their parents will not let them go. Of course, our parents sometimes fail us. But when we leap off the top of a flight of stairs, we have enough experience of them to be sure that they are trustworthy and dependable. Faith is like an object on the ground, like that rope coiled up at the top of the cliff. We have to take it in our hands at some time and determine that we will let ourselves over the edge. It is the same with our relationship with God. It is all very well having lots of facts at our hands. It is all very well having read many passages of the scripture. But at some point we have to trust God, take hold of him and be sure that he has taken hold of us and allow ourselves to be let down over the edge of our life. Do you remember the healing of the child in the New Testament? The father came to our Lord Jesus and it was clear that although he believed Jesus could help his daughter, he was not 100% certain. He said to our Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And that is the experience for many of us as Christians. We have some faith in God, we have some trust in God, but our hearts are still full of weakness and some confusion. But that little faith is enough. God will receive it if we offer it to him and will multiply it and bear fruit from it in our lives. The man who came to Jesus with only a little faith went away with his daughter healed. And in our own lives, although we may have many doubts, if we can place our faith and trust in God as far as we are able, then we will find that he will not let us go. What then is our orthodox faith? It is trust in a person and not in facts and teachings about that person. We have faith in God because we know that as a divine person, a holy trinity, he loves us and has shown his love to us and can be trusted. It is not more mere belief. It is not mere belief. It is possible for people to believe things about God and yet not to trust God. We know that the devil himself believes that God exists and yet that does not mean he is in a life-giving and saving relationship with God. We must trust in the Holy Trinity because God has revealed himself as a loving community of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And when we have faith and trust in this God, we discover that our life is transformed as we enter into this divine community. Those beginning the Christian life might have weak faith. This is to be expected and we should not be disturbed. It is because we have not yet had experience of the God who is trustworthy and dependable. But in our Christian lives, as we give over the difficulties we face one by one to God and see him acting in love on our behalf, then we learn to trust him more and our lives become filled with greater and greater faith. This has been my own experience. I came from a Protestant background and knew very little of the Orthodox faith. I have had to face many difficulties on my journey into becoming Orthodox and then in serving God in the church and finally becoming a priest. But step by step I have discovered that God can be trusted. And this is what faith means. Trust in a person. Trust in a God who we experience. It is very hard for someone who has no such experience to understand what we mean. They think that we must mean that we merely hope some in someone we cannot see. But that could not be further from the truth. We may not see God with the eyes of our head, but we see him in our lives acting for our salvation in love. We see him answering our prayers. 
we see him acting in love towards us through those others that we live with in the Christian church. We see him in so many ways and we have learnt to trust him and to discover that he is trustworthy. This is what the Orthodox Christian faith is. It means trusting in a real person. It doesn't mean trusting blindly, it means trusting because we have evidence. And in this God, I have learned to trust with my whole heart as far as I am able. And those other Orthodox Christians who have put their trust in him in this way have learned that he will not fail them. It is this that we invite those with a weak faith and those with no faith to experience for themselves by beginning as far as they are able, like the man bringing his daughter to Jesus to be healed, to say, Lord, I do believe, but help me in my unbelief. May God bless us all and teach us to trust him more. Amen. Amen.